Welcome to Thursday, October 20th, 2022. The Stay Weather Podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com or their Facebook page. Well, it's Throwback Thursday. Now, some of you are going to know exactly what you're seeing here. Some of you will not. I'm showing my age here. But if you remember Monday Night Football from a long time ago when Don Meredith was in the booth, when it looked like the game was over, he would sing... Turn out the lights, the party's over. And I think this is kind of apropos for what exactly is going to be happening here. Uh, What has been just a wonderful stretch of weather is about ready to come to a crashing end. But we do have a few more days of this good weather, sunny and mild conditions, albeit there's going to be a little more wind developing, especially tomorrow as the weather pattern changes. Friday, Folks in the Pacific Northwest, Washington and Oregon, Northern California will feel this front by Saturday morning. Idaho into Utah, Northern Nevada and Western Wyoming will be into the rain, the snow and the falling temperatures. It won't be really until late Saturday night and Sunday before the cold front jumps over the Continental Divide. We are going to see rain. We're going to see especially mountain snow. We're also going to be dealing with likely some very high winds. This all adds up to travel impacts. Saturday night through Sunday night into Monday morning, travel in some locations will be impacted by the rain, the snow, and the wind. The snow in the mountains will be the most significant. I think this will be a mountain event in terms of where the heaviest snow will fall, but lower elevation roads and highways, mountain passes are all going to be impacted. You have through midday Saturday. Then after that, things change. Also, we've got a La Nina update for you. Photos still trickling on in. Still some great glimpses of those fall colors. Enjoy them because by this weekend, a lot of these scenes are going to be, well, looking a lot different going forward. Great conditions. These clear blue skies have made for great sunrises and sunsets. Satellite photo shows the west clear The streak of clouds right here you see is in response to those strong jet stream winds we've been talking about for the last week or so. And boy, here they are screaming across the North Pacific there across the Aleutians. You can see the very strong jet stream wind centered right here. But look how strong the winds are for such a long stretch going all the way back to Japan. So if you've got a flight from Tokyo to Seattle, you're going to get there early today with those strong tailwinds. And this is what's going to initiate the big weather pattern change. So we've got the cold weather in the east, the warm weather in the west. And there you can really see it this morning with the temperature anomalies. Look at that cold down in Georgia and Florida there all the way to the Gulf Coast. But on the flip side, it's warmer than average from Alaska all the way down to Santa Fe and Denver and back into western areas of the United States. By Saturday morning, though, this is 6 a.m. Saturday, we've got the low crashing into the Pacific Northwest. The high pressure is growing and building here, causing that jet stream to take a dip. And there you go. You are going to see the weather patterns really start to change and change quickly because of that jet stream wind is so fast and so strong, you're gonna get the changes happening very, very quickly. Then you're gonna have that cold air pouring in behind it. By Sunday morning, notice that the low becomes a little better organized. And when a low gets organized like this, it kind of slows down the pattern. So we've got a low right over and just north of Salt Lake City at 18,000 feet, 500 millibars by Sunday morning. This is why areas along and west of this line are gonna be looking at the rain, the snow, and the cold first. The front range of Colorado, southeastern Wyoming, out into the plains, it's gonna be during the day Sunday where the weather pattern really takes the turn with that cold air coming on in. And then notice this. Notice that by Sunday evening, this is 6 p.m. Sunday, the low actually tracks a little southeast and becomes better organized right over Sydney. And what'll happen here, if it takes this track we're going to end up with some really strong winds in northeastern Colorado, western Nebraska, and southeastern Wyoming. While back here, it's going to be the heavier precipitation with the rain and the snow, but a downsloping event will limit the snow for Cheyenne, Denver, Fort Collins, down to Colorado Springs, but a high wind event is going to be taking place with the track of the low. Remember, the heavier precipitation is always northwest of the low. This type of pattern 
makes it very windy along the I-70 corridors, the I-80 corridors as well. This is the precipitation forecast through 6 p.m. on Monday. You can see the brighter colors there going from the western mountains of Washington and Oregon through the mountains of Idaho into Montana. But you can see some impressive amounts of moisture hitting the mountains. And there you go. Hunters, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen. It's going to. And it's really going to come Saturday into Sunday in the west. And then the rest of the area is late Saturday night through Sunday night and Monday morning. Notice we do have some snow stretching out on into the plains here. Notice there's not much snow here. That's because of the downslope into the Colorado Front Range. If that low tracks further south, that could change, and we'll update you tomorrow. Honing in a little bit closer, you can see some very impressive snow totals. Also, we're, we're anticipating there's going to be I-80 problems, especially right here, uh, probably Oh, very late Saturday night and during the day Sunday because of snow and wind. One thing with all the warm temperatures we've had, soil moisture, rather soil temperatures, pavement temperatures are pretty warm. So the first initial rounds of snow will melt. But then as the colder air comes in, that will change. Now here is the wind I wanted to talk about. The wind is really going to crank up Sunday and Monday. Look at these wind gusts. We've got 60s right here in western South Dakota, western Nebraska, eastern Wyoming. Look at South Pass. Beaver Rim area, south pass 63 miles an hour. You combine that with snow, yeah, you've got problems. And then you can see the strong winds along the I-80 corridor here as well. Very strong winds for some front range areas up in Rocky Mountain National Park as well. And then you can see how wide, from a regional standpoint, these strong winds are going to be as that storm intensifies. Along and south of I-70 here, Colorado Springs, down to Trinidad, Lamar, La Hanna, into Garden City, Kansas, down into New Mexico, gonna see a lot of wind. Look at all these winds here, even into parts of Southern California. And this is the temperature change. This is by 6 p.m. Saturday. Notice the Continental Divide is really kind of the de demarcation point between the cold and the warm. But this is by Monday, 6 p.m., and you can see the cold is overspreading all of the area. And this is if, uh, if you were to take a national look at the pattern, this is for later today, this is for later on Sunday. So a complete reversal. And it's not only one storm system we're watching, but you know what? We may, Wednesday night and Thursday, have another trough swinging through. We'll have to see. Question marks on this one, but there's some type of other frontal system coming in the middle of next week behind this one. So it is a bit of a one-two punch, and there you can see it. Notice a pretty good swath of precipitation, again, maybe, with that system, but it does also translate to another chance for snow in some areas further out on into the plains. A La Nina update for you. This latest forecast chart looks very similar to what we've shown you lately. This is the average of all the computer models showing a general warming trend of the subtropical waters in the Pacific, which means that as we get into January, February, March, right around this time frame, February, March, April, we're basically going to go into a neutral status. La Nina is still showing signs that it is going to fade, but it's still robust. From a statistical standpoint, you can see the blue, the blue columns. You see how they're getting shorter and shorter as we go into spring, while the red columns, which is showing the potential for let's say the statistical probabilities of an El Nino, they're pretty low, but they're going up. What you want to pay attention to are the gray bars here. This shows the neutral status of the La Nina generally fading away. If you look at sea surface temperature anomalies today, or the most recent update, to where we were a year ago, notice the similarities out in the Pacific. Very strong La Nina here, but I want you to pay attention up here. This was last year at the same time. Notice the colder sea surface temperatures up here in the Gulf of Alaska. However, look how much warmer they are here now relative to the 30 year average. This right here is a cold signal. If those warm temperatures continue, the deeper we get into the cold season, if that sea surface temperature anomaly stays that warm relative to average, that makes that high pressure ridge build in at times opening the door to Canada. Have yourself a great Thursday. We'll have a lot more for you tomorrow.